Well, good morning. Um, something I've always kind of meant to do today, but uh, never got round to it, is I'm going to run round Westwater. So, just setting off from the cottage. As you can see, the valley's really socked in. Lots of low cloud, uh, drizzle. Um, I would go up into the cloud. I haven't got a problem with that. Um, but my quads are still absolutely shot. Never had them this bad before. Um, so I'm hoping they'll warm up a bit. So basically I'm gonna stay low level. So there's gonna be some little ups and downs along the bottom of the screes, but um, nothing major. Um, whereas everything else, the up's fine. The quads are fine going up. It's the downhill, that's the bad bit. So I'm gonna go, um, I did some dog dowsing, so that is, wasn't sure what route to take and particularly if I was going to do wasp water whether I'd do it clockwise or anti-clockwise. See so if I do it clockwise it means I'm going along the bottom of the screes first so all the the big rocks and the fun interesting stuff but then all the way back is on the road. Or whether I should do it anti-clockwise so do the road first get that out of the way and then enjoy myself back along the rocks. But then obviously the legs would be a little bit tighter. Um, so I that's a funny that. So I uh, wrote each option down on a piece of paper, put a little um, sounds like a bit of a rock fall. Um, a tiggy treat on each bit of paper and then asked Tiggy to choose which one I should do and she chose clockwise so I am doing the rocks and the scree first so I will uh, video while I can as I said it's going to be grey and misly I think all day um, and yeah we shall see how we get on but yeah I'm just walking at the moment I'm just trying to get the quads to warm up again because they're so stiff wow um, if I try and run, I'm hobbling a little bit, although I can do little baby steps. So we'll see how we get on. Funny, that little crossing just the other day was uh, almost dry as a bone. Shows how quickly the water can come up and go down. Uh, up here. So it's going to be an interesting little, little, uh, little bimble actually. Um, <clears throat> it's certainly going to be, I think, the longest run I've done since I stopped running to try and fix the adductor injury um, and certainly the latter half coming back along the road it's definitely going to be the longest tarmac run in a long 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 time so it'll be interesting to see how everything works because um, although the, <laughs> the quads are agony um, the adductor's been behaving so far and touch wood um, my left heel has been behaving since I had the, what, five, six week break as well, so I'm really hoping that that's going to survive the tarmac, and if it does, maybe that's healed enough that it's not going to continue hurting for the Pennai Way as well, so, yeah, everything crossed. I'm umming and ironing whether just to take this jacket off, I'm already feeling a bit toasty. So that's it, I decided jacket was off. It's still really kind of what we call Cumberland rain, so very, very fine drizzle. Um, <clears throat> but jacket's off, sleeves are rolled up. I'm gonna, with the amount it's drizzling, I will get just as wet from sweat keeping the jacket on, and I also feel like I'm getting too hot, then I will just in a single long sleeve top and getting wet from the drizzle, so decision made. So 
There you go, today's run. Gonna be going along the bottom of the screes, so round round the lake, and then back along the road and all the way back. So of interest, I've got no idea actually how long how far it is. I think it's about 10 miles, maybe a little bit longer. Because normally I would go along the bottom of the screes and then up to Wind Rig at the far end along the top and back down. But I would love to do it today because it'd be lovely being up there in the cloud. Um, but I just know there's no way the quads would cope with coming down that hill. So they're uh, just going to have to make do with a, a waste water circumnavigation is a big word for you today. Looking forward to it. Well, here I'm about to enter the open fell. Look. Warning sign saying it's about to get rocky. Caution. No kidding. This is going to be to the best bit. Oh, look, little flotilla of grey lag geese just in the middle of the last water there. Look at the low cloud. Beautiful there. And at the moment, not drizzling, which is good. So we're going that way. <laughs> All these little ups and downs are such good fun. Great for the quads and the glutes. Get everything working. A lot of the downs are still painful on the quads. It has to be said. Got very wet legs and feet from running through the bracken that's kind of overhanging. Ooh. Ooh. So what would be middle fell if you could see it? And uh, you barrow. A little bit lighter over by the sea. It is uh, very slippery. Slippery rocks, slippery grass. Just because of the wet. It would be nicer to have it a little bit drier, but the slightly over large hokers are doing well. I do love how because it's like running on clouds. Just gloriously comfortable. And there we go, a little view of where I'm going. This is when I wish I had one of those little drones that follows you along and videos. That'd be excellent. Ooh, better watch where I'm going. <laughs> to the big rocks. Woohoo! It's my favourite bit. 
I've done most of what I'd call the medium rocks, uh, which I have to say aren't my favourite because they're more prone to moving under your feet. And a little, sorry, just trying to work out which way I'm going. Note to self is don't run on small loose boulders when you haven't got fresh quads because it adds a little funny sort of, of uh, excitement when the stone moves under your feet and your quads aren't quite lively enough to catch you very well. <laughs> so you see, that's my least favourite stuff. That moves too easily, whereas this stuff is bigger and doesn't tend to move quite as much, which is much better. So you can see now there's the youth hostel grounds over there, which is where I'll be going in a little while, and then following the road all the way back down. Hopefully there won't be too much traffic, but I'm going to have to stop and have some, something to eat in a minute. Feeling peckish, he says, slipping. into the mists. A little bit slip slidey. I would normally be a fair bit quicker over this stuff, but this is so slippery today. No point taking risks. Just take it easy, watch your footing. For me, one of the key bits is actually to stand on the peaks of rocks. So like this bit, where it's, there's a bit of an edge. For me, that's less likely to slide than if you try and stand on what looks like a nice kind of flat bit. In that case, you're more likely to slip slide. Some big boulders here now. Try and keep recording while I keep my balance. But if you'll forgive me, I will definitely be looking at where I'm putting my feet rather than looking at the camera. <laughs> Just the best. Get onto the big rock. Whoa. Big step. Oh. Oh. Looking across. So that's where I've just come from. That's where I'm going. Yay! Time for some food! Let's go back this way so I can have a seat with me feet downwards. Oh. Look at that for the snack view. Don't get much better than that. Wow, nice little break. Um, that's cool off a bit now, so I'm going to get going. But I wanted to show you this stuff, my favourite favourite oat bar in the world. It tastes like bonfire toffee. It's glorious. But you can only get them up here. Last time I even looked online, you couldn't get them online. So if anybody from that company is watching this, let me know how I can buy some because I'll be buying them in bulk. I love them. Anyway, time to 
Wow, wow, wow. Get the quads moving again. And I am going that way. Woo! Well, there you go. That's the rocks done. It's just a path around to the uh, the pump house and the youth hostel now. That was good. I think that's actually the first time I've done those uh, since wearing very focals and that added adds a little zest to it when you're trying to do a bit of this, trying to get things into focus. Although to be fair, last time I did that, I was carrying a dog under one arm as well, as you do. <laughs> There's something utterly lovely about, whoa, low branch, about the smell of wet bracken. I love it. So I'm just coming up to the pump house. There's the uh, youth hostel over there, was the youth hostel. So I've got to go around the woods, which I haven't been around for years, but from memory, it's actually a really nice track. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. And then it'll be on the tarmac, which is a shame, but it's the only way I can do it today. I'm not going to go up and over the squeeze. So you've got the pump house behind me, and I'm at the far end of the lake. So all I've got to do is get all the way back there. <laughs> Beautiful little bit of wood just this side of the river. I've just got to find the little footbridge to get over into the uh, youth hostel land. That's really nice, look at it. Beautiful. Little uh, bluebells I think and some meadow buttercup and all this white is pig nut. Gorgeous. And here's the outflow from the lake. Beautiful wood. Little ferns and lots of moss. Shame it's not like this all the way down the other side of the lake. This would be glorious. I thought I'd just come off the track, which is just there, and just run, run along the edge for a minute. Just about make out the path that I came round on. And we're heading that way. Although not as the crow flies, I'll be a little bit damp. Wow, look, a bench with a view. Oh. Now that's a good bench. <laughs> Just need a bit of company to enjoy it. <laughs> I'll get the legs moving, otherwise I'll seize up. Let 
don't know why people don't shut gates. So that's it, that's last of the path. It's now probably getting off about four miles of road all the way back to the green. And yeah, that wind's quite strong, it would certainly be whistling up on the tops of there. And definitely the right decision for the quads. Just these little dips in the road are uh, hard enough. Well, nearly to the end of the lake now. Here's the little U-Barrow car park. And then up the U-Barrow. So I've just gone through some little uh, kind of almost tree shelters. We're going to get into the full whack of the wind in a minute. And it's certainly getting out. There's some lots of little white horses out on the lake. So yeah, I think my estimate at about 10 miles is going to be spot on. It's 8.2 now. And I reckon it's going to be at least a mile to the green. And then I've got a little bit up the track to up to the cottage, so it's probably not going to be far off. The uh, legs are very tight now. It's uh, doing the Bailey shuffle. Still lovely to be out there. Wouldn't have it any other way. Well, that's it, almost back. The watch has just gone. Just gone 10 miles, 10.02. So it wasn't a bad guess. So just gone past the green, coming up to uh, the little Wasdale church. So lots and lots of history. St Olaf's Wasdale Head. I'd love to take you in there, but I wouldn't want a video in there. It feels disrespectful. So uh, if you want to have a look and you're not up here, get online. I think there's quite a bit on there. And there's. Burnthwaite Farm, just at the end of the track, which is where the cottage is. Woohoo! And I think, when I get back, it's going to be grab an extra top and then come straight back down to, straight back down to the pub. I can feel a, a large drink and some cheesy chips. Get some carbs in. So I'll see you on another day. Take care.